Okay, it is 5.01, so uh, I will welcome everyone to the February 5th meeting of the City Services Committee. My name is Stan Moulton. I will be presiding, and this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Laura, please call the roll. Sure. Councillor Moulton. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Dubbs. Here. And Councillor Rothenberg. Here. Thank you. All right, we have minutes from our organizational meeting two weeks ago, January 22nd, that were sent earlier today. Did everyone have a chance to look at those? Yes? Okay. Yep, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of January 22nd, 2024. I'll second that. Okay, we have motion and two seconds. Any discussion? <laughs> Laura, please call the roll. Sure. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. And Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Thank you. Passes unanimously. Uh, next, next up is public comment. I don't see anyone here, but I will say that um, our practice is to take public comment for any <clears throat> matter that is not on our agenda as long as it's within the, the uh, jurisdiction of the Committee on City Services, which is the activities and operation of municipal government, including the review of all candidates for appointments to boards and commissions. If anyone wants to speak about issues on the agenda, please uh, hold your comments until they come up. Is there anyone here for general public comment? Seeing no one, we will now proceed to uh the appointment of kayla fisher as auditor that was referred to us on uh, january 4th no that was referred to us on january 18th uh both the mayor and uh, director finance director nardi are, are here as well as uh, kayla fisher the appointee uh to set the table i will explain that the office of the auditor provides accounting services for city departments and monitors all financial activity for accountability and legal compliance. Uh, Northampton's auditor manages a staff of three other employees. Oh, Mayor, do you wanna kick this off? Yes, thank you for, um, for that introduction on that. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, Finance Director Nardi and I are very happy to be here with Kayla Fisher, who is um, the appointment for city auditor for Northampton with the retirement of our longtime auditor, Joyce Karpinski. Uh, we are extremely fortunate to have Kayla to fill this critical position. Um, I really wanna take a moment to impress upon you how fortunate we are because there is a very significant identified shortage of qualified municipal finance officers in the Commonwealth. And many municipalities are facing huge hiring challenges due to retirements like the one we're experiencing. Um, and But in the, in the world of a competitive labor market and a lack of candidates with specialized knowledge. So the concern that municipalities are unable to hire for their core financial management teams um, was actually just cited a couple of weeks ago by the governor and the lieutenant governor at the MMA annual conference in January um, as something that they're continuing to work on. Um, and I say continuing because the need has been so urgent for a number of years that the former administration convened a task force to work on this problem in 2017. One of the strategies that came out of this task force um, was called the Local Finance Commonwealth Fellowship Program, uh, which the city was asked to participate in last year. And we had two great um, HCC interns from Northampton that went through intensive training at HCC um, and then did work-based learning in our financial departments in Northampton. So um, the planning for filling our critical financial and oversight positions is something that we take incredibly seriously in the city. And um, again, we are just so fortunate to have Kayla joining the city with her knowledge and experience. So uh, with that, I'm happy to, to pass it over to Director Nardi. So yes, good evening, everyone. Um, as the mayor mentioned, um, we have had a lot of retirements from key areas and positions in recent years. And the city um, does take this um, very seriously, and we have completed succession planning for those identifying the key positions, reviewing job descriptions, identifying identifying capabilities, and identifying interested candidates and employees that have those skills 
all for the purpose um, to make sure that there are smooth transitions for these positions. Um, the position of city auditor is a complex and important position in municipal government. Uh, Joyce Karpinski, our former auditor, was extremely knowledgeable and reliable. Um, she knew finance law, the city finance policies, our accounting setup, and was very familiar with Munis, our accounting software. She served the city, as the mayor mentioned, for 17 years with commitment and dedication. Um, Susan Wright, the former finance director, held her in high regard. Um, and worked with her for um, at least 14 years, if not longer. And I had the honor and pleasure of working with her for the last two and a half years. Um, I learned a lot from Joyce and I have great respect for her knowledge and her work ethic. Um, she will be missed. However, I do um, you know, wanna say that filling this position with the right person was extremely important as we began discuss discussing succession planning. Um, and when Joyce announced her retirement, we planned time for her to overlap with the new person, um, providing plenty of time for training. Uh, the position was posted in March, 2023 on the city website and on the Massachusetts um, Municipal Association. And it was sent out to the M Massachusetts Government Finance Officers Association for distribution. And, and like we said, losing someone with Joyce's tenure experience and knowledge leaves a large hole. Therefore, it was our goal to hire someone with, um, uh, with the experience um, and ability to jump right in to where, to, where um, to be able to work with the city, to have that experience, um, to have a municipal background, to know finance law and to fit in um, for a smooth transition. So therefore, um, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Kayla Fisher, who has a wealth of municipal experience, has seamlessly taken over the role of city auditor. She began working for the city in July of 2023, and she has worked with Joyce and the auditing staff for the last seven months. And we are, and I am pleased here to introduce her. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Ms. Fisher, if you want to say anything, uh, uh, feel free. Otherwise, uh, there may be some questions. Mm -hmm. So generally, um, the position of auditor is, uh, is, is usually in the background, um, but and they are great at answering any questions you have. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll do. Councillors. Yes. Council of the Barge. Thank you. Um, Carla, welcome to city service. Thank you. Anyways, I, the mayor is absolutely correct. I heard about the MMA and about the concerns of the shortage happening throughout the municipalities. I heard our finance director come out and say about our previous auditor, that she also had some knowledge in finance law, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Anyways, I've read Carla's um, application, and I find it to be very, very, she's very knowledgeable. There's no question about it. I just have a little bit of concerns here. I'd like to know, Mayor, how many applicants were there for this position since there's such a shortage? Yeah, um, and Director Nardi led that search so I can let her answer those. We we, we actually, people um, are happy to work in Northampton and often apply. And so that's actually something that okay. um, I think is really great. So uh, there is a great shortage, but I we did get a handful of applicants. Um, Thank you so for, much, Mary. Yeah, Charlene Thank can answer more that. specifically, though. Um, looking at her resume and all that, she currently, I feel, I can't answer for anybody else, but she's very, very knowledgeable. And I'm hearing that from our mayor. I'm also hearing it from our finance director. And to me, that's not an easy job at all because you need to have a tremendous amount of knowledge in different areas as being an auditor for any municipality. So anyways, I, I wanna thank Carla very, very much for this resume. 
It's excellent. And I look down about you being a town accountant, right down the line, office manager. And that's important to get that experience. Another thing I'd like to ask is why, Carla, did you select the city of Northampton? Um, I, I saw the opportunity there. Um, at the time, I was actually, when I was working for the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, I was working in four different towns, which is a lot of juggling. Yes. And coming to one city um, puts, you know, makes you grounded, you know, and, and you're more, from, you know, you know what's going on with one city when you're juggling four different towns and trying to figure out which town is doing what. <laughs> right. Plus, it's an excellent department, excellent staff. We got a great finance director who also was trained by Susan Wright, who was one of the best also. So um, I want to thank you for the resume. I want to thank you for looking at our wonderful city of Northampton. I was born and raised here. I love my city. And you'll be working with one of our greatest mayors, believe me. She's awesome. She's very commutative with our residents her staff, and I want to thank you for applying for the job. And oh, Councilor Council Labarge, you muted yourself. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> you, you, you were thanking uh, Ms. Fisher for applying. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I, I did want to circle back, Director Nardi, uh, how many application, uh, applications were reviewed? Oh, we received five applicants. Mm -hmm. And Kayla Thank had the most municipal experience. In fact, she, I believe she was the only one who had municipal experience. Thanks. Other questions? Uh, Councillor Councillor Rosenberg, can you just let me know where we are procedurally in this timeline wise and everything? We are, our charge is to review the appointment that the mayor submitted to the council and uh, issue a recommendation that will go to the full council, presumably at our next meeting on February 15th. That recommendation could be a positive recommendation, a negative recommendation, or a neutral recommendation. And I think a neutral recommendation would normally be used if there were additional information that we were requesting uh, to be brought forward by, by, uh, by the time this goes to the council for a, uh, a vote. Thanks. Yeah, on that note, I just wanted to uh, remind my fellow counselors what I had raised at our last meeting, which was that I was interested for a position of such importance in having some interviews with uh, what I called collaterals. Um, uh, Councilor Moulton, did you follow up with the mayor about the possibility of that? I, I myself followed up with the council president and can report back. Okay. You. Well, I'm happy to hear your report. Um, I did discuss this with the mayor. I had no uh, specific requests from any committee members for uh, specific individuals to appear today. As I think all of you know, uh, requests for information do go through the mayor and we, we give uh, anybody who we request to appear before us a week to prepare with the specific questions that they'll be expected to answer. In the absence of requests for any individual to appear before us, I asked the mayor to be here. And uh, if we feel at the end of our discussion today that we, we lack sufficient information, uh, then we can ask the mayor today uh, for uh, anybody else who we want to appear. Uh, presumably, that could happen either at the full council meeting or at a special meeting of city services. I'll just note, I, I would want to check it with our labor attorney, though, because asking... Um, subordinate employees to come to a public meeting um, is is not something that I'm sure we can do to then report out on. Um, right. That was these. our that was our concern as well from the city council side. Mm -hmm. um, Alex Jarrett and I discussed uh, that we'd like to have a follow up with the chair of city services um, about maybe seeing if we could conference with 
HR um, about a policy or procedure for city services to be able to discreetly and confidentially um, interview members of city departments in general, not in, not in relation to this necessarily, but just as a practice so that we can understand better um, and have more informed um, analyses ourselves before we make our recommendations. So that's where that's where I am today is that I feel like we don't really have a process to be able to fully explore um, how a candidate would fit within a department. And especially in this case where a candidate has been there for seven months, I would really like to, to see if um, Mr. Moulton and Mr. Jarrett and the mayor might be able to come up with a process that could help us as counselors get, get to know them better, get to know the department better. Uh, I'm always happy to meet with the council president and the mayor. However, uh, we do have a process. Uh, it involves uh, a, a, a search that is done by, mm -hmm. by staff. Uh, at times, search committees are, are, are named to assist in that process. We, as a city services committee, we are not a search committee. We do not review applications. We do not uh, review uh, rec uh, 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 references. We rule on, we make a recommendation on the appointments that are put forward by the mayor. And in this case, the search was handled by uh, finance director Nardi, who I have the utmost confidence in to make evaluations of the five candidates and to put forward the most qualified candidates. So there is a process in place that we're following. If there is something uh, additional that we can do, I'm happy to sit down with uh, Council President Jarrett and, and the mayor. I, I, I agree with the mayor that I think there would be legal hurdles, however, so I would tread very carefully uh, in that direction. Council LaBarge. Yes, um, I, I have to back that quarterly. I really feel there might be some legal problems here with confidentiality being involved. And I do have to say, as a city councilor, I've been on a search committee, not through city service, but I was asked from previous mayors, like the director of um, the senior center right down the line. And it was very interesting, all the applicants coming in and so forth like that and hearing them and then making a, a decision of who we were gonna select. We would select three out of our applicants and send them to the mayor, which she has her own committee at that point. And they do more research with the applicants. But I agree with Stan with what he's saying. So anyways, what I would like to do is make a motion with a positive recommendation for Carla Fisher as an auditor of the full city council. A motion made, is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions, uh, Ms. Fisher. Uh, you noted, I think, in your cover letter when you applied a year or so ago, and the mayor also noted that you're currently working toward your MM or Massachusetts Municipal Auditors and Accountants yes. Association certificate. Yes. Uh, can you tell us where you're at in that in that process, please? Um, testing in March. Testing next month. Yep, it is next month. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's great. Are there other educational opportunities that you have identified so that you can continue your professional development? Um, there's an annual class every year in March um, that we're required to attend so many um, sessions of. And then they have trainings, you know, throughout the year. That's great. And I, I hope I believe this, I, I can't speak for the mayor, but I believe the city would support your, your, you know, opportunities for professional development so you can keep current with best practices. Yes. The, the other question I would ask you, I understand why you felt uh, a career change from overseeing uh, four uh, financial uh, operations in smaller communities to uh, a one larger one might be might be good for you. Was there anything that has surprised you in the uh, six uh, or seven months that you spent in Northampton? It's different. It's 
very much different from smaller towns. Yeah. Um, I'm not used to everybody um, entering their invoices themselves um, and some of the other things that they all do themselves. Um, that um, is different. I'm used to entering them or I had an assistant before that would enter them and then I would finish processing them. So that's a little bit different. Um, and um, payroll, um, having an in-city payroll. Usually um, with the smaller towns, they have a payroll company that you plug the information, send it out and they process everything. But- um, So are those, are those challenge is good in the sense that oh, yes. uh, okay Definitely. Definitely. You're, you're 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 finding those good good to work with yes okay and plus yes councilor barge yes and plus carla you're gonna have a good group of employees i do have worked okay with our previous auditor Yes. You know, you're going to be very comfortable in there. Yes. You've got a good, good group working like Everybody's that. been great down there. Yes. Okay. That's great to hear. Any further questions? Oh. Uh, Councillor Rothenberg. Hi, Kayla. Thanks so much for coming in. I was wondering what kinds of uh, processes you might like to improve, what ideas you have. Um, you've been here for a little while. Um, you're a very competent professional. I'm sure that you've got some creative ideas you want to bring to the department as well. Um, I don't really have a lot to change right now. Um, a lot of the processes are fairly spot on. Um, there's still stuff I'm learning because I learned um, Joyce's position and I want to learn the rest of it. Um, the entering payroll you know, the um, entering invoices, stuff like that, that um, I wasn't trained as much on because I needed to learn the, you know, the, the more detailed part of it. Um, so until I see all of it, I can't really say I have any changes that could be made. Um, I like that the city's um, starting to go um, electronically with some things. And there's a lot of things that I think could be electronic that don't, you know, we don't have to have paper everywhere. Um, my staff went downstairs today to tag a bunch of boxes that need to like, you know, go to the shredder or be recycled because we have just boxes and boxes of documents down there that we don't need to keep after our audits are completed and successful. Mm -hmm. that, that all makes so much sense. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Anything else before we vote? Laura, roll call, please. This is on a positive recommendation for the appointment of Kayla Fisher as auditor. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Neutral. Uh, that you need to abstain, Councillor Rothenberg. Or no, if it's yes or no, positive, it would be neutral. So I guess that's a no. Well, you're Council. voting. You're voting, uh, Council Rothenberg. You're voting on a positive recommendation. So you 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 have three choices: yes, no, or abstain. Right. No. Okay. Councilor Moulton. Yes. Yes. That is a three to one vote for a positive recommendation. Uh, and uh, just to reiterate, Ms. Fisher, that will go to the full council for a vote, I presume, on February 15th, which is our next meeting. But you certainly will be kept in the loop on that. So uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Director Nardi. Good night. Thank you, Shardine. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Next on the agenda is we have three appointments to boards and commissions. We'll take these one at a time. First up is David Ames to fill a vacancy on the Parks and Recreation Commission. And I believe, Councilor Labarge, you have yes. talked with uh, David Ames. Oh, I sure did. Um, excellent to talk with. I mean, excellent. 
Um, he was born and raised in our city of Northampton, and Ooh. he is into recreation big time. And part of his job is that also. Um, he was born and raised in Northampton, grew up on Crescent Street. And like after 25 years in Connecticut, he is back and looking forward to serving the city. He almost thought about running for war too, he told me, took out his papers. And then he said, you know, I love to go skiing in Vermont. And, and plus he's working all the time. And he said, maybe someday he'll look at that. But I also asked him what he thought about the Parks and Recreation Commission. And he says that he knows that the Park and Recreation Commission, Commission oversees the youth adult programs, as well as providing quality park and recreation facilities in conjunction with the DPW, which is correct. And I asked him also why he was interested in applying for the appointment of Parks and Recreation Commission. He said, now that he's back in Northampton and he has wanted to give back to the city, he loves and, I, and he feels the Park and Recreation Commission would be a great place to start. And I also asked him if there was a particular issue that he was interested in working on. He said anything helps promote the great outdoor resources and facilities Northampton has to offer. Whether it's Musani Beach, the multiple of youth and adult programs, or the community gardens. I was glad to hear about that. And I asked him what his background is, and if you looked at his application quite a bit. His primary background is in the athletic retail, concentrating in bikes and skis, as well as working at a Patagonia shop in Connecticut for 12 years. I also asked him about his work-life experience. Do you have that is relevant to this role? I have been a lifelong runner, skier, and bike rider. I ski at Berkshire East on a regular basis. I have competed in cycle, cross, and mountain bike races throughout New England, as well as run in many road and trail races, including the Boston uh, Marathon. Very pleased with him. Him and I talked for a good 40 minutes, and he's checked in on the website about parks and recreations. Many people have talked to him about it. I think he's going to be a great asset with the knowledge that he has. And also, I know for a fact that, Laura, you did send um, the information from Anne-Marie Mojo, the director from the rec department, and she was out for a whole week, but she said that she was very pleased to have him due to his knowledge. So as a city councilor, I feel that I would definitely, there's no question about it, make a positive recommendation um, for David Adams. Ames. To appoint David Ames to be appointed on the Parks and Recreation Commission to the full city council. Thank you, Councillor Barge, for that very complete report. Much appreciated. Uh, is there a second to her motion? Second. Thank you. Thank you. So just to reiterate uh, what Council Labarge said, we did hear back from Anne-Marie Mogio, who's the director of Parks and Rec, with uh, enthusiasm. She is uh, set to welcome David Ames. Any further discussion? Roll call, please, Laura, on a positive recommendation for David Ames. I think she's Sorry, just having trouble with my cursor. Um, uh, Councillor Dobbs. Yeah, uh, yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. That passes unanimously. 
Okay, next up, we'll take the uh, two appointees to the Arts Council individually. Next up is uh, Jen Pollins, and I believe that uh, Councillor Dubbs, uh, you uh, interviewed her, correct? That is correct. Uh, yeah, I spoke with her on the phone last week. We had a great conversation. Um, so Jen has been a resident of Northampton for 20 years. Um, she was a professional dancer in Europe before coming to Northampton, and she also was a professional dancer in New York City. Um, she decided to move to Northampton because she was interested in um, learning more about uh, body work training, alternative somatic training, as well as arts programming. Um, she's the producer and the artistic director of uh, the School of Contemporary Dance and Thought, which is a nonprofit that she started nine years ago. Um, <clears throat> it offers inter interdiscipl interdisciplinary programming, um, expanding the idea of what dance is through collaborations, um, philosophy, and research. Um, the school um, uh, also uh, through also offers technique technique classes, uh, youth classes, and has a young artist program called the Hatchery Performance Company, which um, and um, also um, she organizes performances by musicians. Um, and as well as workshops. Um, Jen has also participated in uh, something called the Wire Monkey Dance, which uh, which uh, creates highly physical dance install installations utilizing steel scaffolding and uh, other industrial materials. Um, in terms of um, the Arts Council, um, and uh, I, when I talked to her about like what she knows about the Arts Council and what she's interested in doing, um, she told me that she's She's already um, done some collaborations with Steven Sanderson and with um, Brian Foote, who's the director of arts and culture. Um, as a grant writer, she um, she understands the grant writing process, and um, she would like to uh, help help with supporting grant the, the grant process. Um, she knows what it takes to put on and organize events. Um, through collaborating with people, she's formed strong connections um, in the community. Um, she she has an expertise in performing arts. She runs a school, um, cultivates community engagement. Um, she's a curator. Um, and in terms of like what she'd be interested in, she said that she doesn't have a particular agenda, but she is hearing, she's interested in hearing what is needed and um, she wants to learn. Um, and also she thinks that she believes that um, the Arts Council is in need of someone who specializes in dance because she believes that there is a lack of of that that sort of thing in in Northampton, and also, <clears throat> uh, to, lastly, I'll just um, quote uh, Brian Foote of uh, the director of the Art, uh, Arts and Culture, who says, "I recommend her with my highest approval. She is an integral part of the regional dance community, and we would be lucky to have her on the council. I look forward to having a council member with extensive experience with dance art, and we lack we lack that as of now. So, um, for those reasons, I, I think that she would be great." a great um, addition to the Arts Council. Thank you, uh, Councillor, for that very complete report. Are you prepared to make a motion for a positive recommendation? I am absolutely prepared to do that. I'll second like... that. Okay. okay. Uh, any discussion? I'll just note for the record that uh, Councillor Dubbs mentioned uh, the affirmation of this appointment by Brian Foote. That uh, information is contained in an email that is attached to our agenda for for the record. So uh, uh, anybody wants to read that complete uh, endorsement from Brian Foote uh, can find it on our agenda. Uh, Council Labarge. Yes, I, I feel that she is going to be excellent with the Arts Council. The dancing part of it is just Awesome. Awesome. And we need that. There's no question about it. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Roll call, Laura, please. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously with a positive recommendation. And uh, the other appointment to the Arts Council is Kit Pedraza, and I believe Councillor Rothenberg uh, that you interviewed them. Yes, I spent an hour with them this weekend at the Majestic 
which they say is like their second home here. They came from Rhode Island and they worked in the corporate world at Bank of America for 10 years, which in some ways was difficult because uh, they identify as um, non-conforming in, in uh, sex and gender, sexuality, and they changed their name and they, they, they had a hard time getting both uh, Bank of America to sort of you know, appreciate and recognize their identity. And when they moved to Northampton, they just fell in love with the sense of community and the kindness of our community. Uh, they feel that we're very welcoming. They feel that they put down their roots. They live here with their husband now. Um, and I really recognize how much they're really enthused um, and committed uh, to Northampton, which I think is wonderful. Uh, they have a degree in studio art with a concentration in drawing and a minor in business administration from Plymouth State University. And they're currently working uh, on a certificate program at an Ivy League school, RISD, where they're attaining a 4.0 while also working in our parking department, which is actually how they came to learn of the Arts Council. Um, I should back up and say that before they came to Northampton, their art preceded them and was hung on the walls of the Majestic. And immediately it began flying off the shelves. It really resonated with the community. Their artwork continues to sell and, and they continue to have artistic success. It's a sort of comic book style pop art. They're sort of paintings or drawings or renderings. Um, a little bit edgy, a little bit funny, very cute. And when the director of uh, parking where they were working saw their art, they recommended the Arts Council. And I thought that was, that was really nice that it, um, they had such sort of a natural integration as an artist into the community and that they really wanna give back as an artist. Uh, they attended two Arts Council meetings and at the very first one, they offered to design a graphic, um, a poster for a cabaret event because they noticed that the Arts Council was relying on an AI generated image. So they volunteered their services and made that beautiful poster. Uh, and they also noticed that we have sort of a need for that in the city as well. They said that right now, a lot of the graphic design is coming out of the students at the high school, um, which is great but it would also be nice to have this sort of professional graphic designer in the fold within the, the Arts Council of the city to help us with that. I also think they might do a really fabulous job kind of revamping our participation potentially in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Um, I think maybe bringing an element of pride to that to represent Northampton amongst our wonderful bagpipers uh, and our neighbors in other cities, it would be really nice. I think they could really represent um, a significant portion of Northampton culturally. And that's really my big takeaway is this is a, this is a young person, 36 years old, um, who really has a lot in common with, with my generation um, in terms of family background and, and where they're going in life. Um, and they're just, they're resonating with the community, the community's resonating with them. Uh, and they've also got a theater and dance background. So for all of those reasons, mm -hmm. and also not the least of which is that they're just an absolutely delightful, bubbly, sweet, funny person. I highly recommend Kit, and I make a motion for a positive recommendation. I'll second that. Okay, thank you, uh, Councilor Rothenberg, for your very, very uh, complete report. Uh, and I will, I will uh, simply add that I think it's very impressive that someone who's not only younger in age, but also younger in terms of uh, being in the community for uh, only a short time is willing to jump in and participate. So I applaud them for that willingness. Thank you. Council Labarge. Yes, and maybe clearly what you could do is have him get a hold of the president of the St. Pat's Association, because I belong to that for years because my husband's mother is a full blown Ryan. So you should you should do that with him and introduce him. I think that would be a great idea. Yes, and I think we're also gonna be seeing the uh, the marshal at city council in March. 
Okay. But yes, I was talking to Brian O'Connor this morning over at Thorns, yep. and um, I'll try to do that. I think there's enough time yet. I do too. Yes, there is. Aaron Kaylane is uh, the person I think that Council Labarge was referring you to. I know who she is. She's related to family. Yes. All right. Any further questions or comments? And I will simply add that. Uh, uh, also, uh, Brian Foot, Director of Arts and Culture, gives uh, a strong endorsement to uh, to Kit as well, and that, of course, is included in the email that's attached to our agenda. Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubb. Yes. And Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. That also passes unanimously. Those three positive recommendations will all go to the council, I presume, for our next meeting um, on February 15th. So thank you for the work that you did, uh, councillors, in uh, bringing that information to us. I found it very, very helpful in uh, supplementing uh, what we see in the applications from uh, these three folks. The, uh, the other... Uh, item on our agenda, I wanted to give uh, uh, particularly the new, the, the new counselors an opportunity to sort of um, reflect on the process of their interviews with um, these candidates. Uh, and if there's anything that you want to suggest, uh, any, any thoughts that you have about that process, uh, it seemed like you had the opportunity uh, to uh, meet either in person or by phone with 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 your with your assignment and uh, uh, but let me let let's talk about anything that you would uh, do differently next time perhaps uh, Council Labarge right I'm very pleased with the way we're doing it I, I think it's excellent people work all day and so forth sometimes just like with um David Ames. I mean, he's gone skiing on the weekends and everything. Everybody does have a life. They work full time. And I think it's excellent that, that Corbery did meet with them. That's important also. But a lot of the problems are, are people, what time they get out of work what, and feed their children, whatever. But I think right now, just hearing the two new counselors, they're doing their job and they're talking with them not for 10 or 15 minutes. You're like me. You just ask and ask and ask and talk. And that's very valuable. And right now I'm looking at, we've got three good candidates. Hopefully will be approved by the full city council. So thank you for everything that you've done with the new applicants coming in. Thank you, Councillor Parch. Any observations from either Councillor Dubbs or, or uh, Councillor Rothenberg? Yes, Councillor Rothenberg. Thank you, uh, Vice President, for those wonderful words of validation that we're doing our work for you and for each other and the city. Um, Councillor Moulton, I really appreciated that you um, were proactive about making sure that we had all the materials that we needed and we were aware of our timelines. I, I find that's very, very helpful. And if you would... Uh, be able to continue in that role and just um, making sure the process is moving along. I think that really helped address some of the things Councillor Labarge was talking about with scheduling. And I know Kit and I had to reschedule once uh, because, you know, cold season and stomach bugs and all those things were going around. So having that extra time that getting the early jump on it and, and being encouraged by our chairperson um, to make sure that we're staying on top of it, I think made all the difference here. Um, and we, we opted to just have a conversation rather than to use the um, questions from the barriers. And that was a, a decision that we made together as far as what would feel more comfortable for the applicant. So I just wanted to put that out there as that's an option um, as well, as far as I understood was these questions were a suggestion. Um, and in this particular case, we went with a free form inter interview, which worked out well for this applicant. Okay, thanks for that. those observations. Uh, to answer your question, yes, I will continue to uh, uh, work to make sure that everybody uh, understands what our timeline is. 
my goal is to be as efficient as possible. Um, I mean, normally we meet monthly. So if we have, uh, you know, if we have appointments that are referred to us, we would then assign to the interviews uh, at, at the next monthly meeting and, um, and then take them up uh, at the following month's meeting. Now, if they're critical, um, if we feel that uh, faster work is needed, we can always have special meetings. But yeah, I will certainly, as someone who spent my profession as a journalist, when I had some experience with deadlines, I will I will make sure that uh, everyone is aware of uh, of the timelines. And uh, Councilor Rothberg, I, I think that however you want to want to have a conversation is is fine. Those questions are merely meant as guidelines. So there's a sort of a sense of the parameters of the ground that we want to cover when we talk to our uh, applicants. But it's not certainly not uh, meant to sort of structure the the interview in a in a in a rigid way. And I mean, I, I have always found in interviews that there are many times that uh, unexpected uh, elements come up in the conversation that you want to that you want to pursue. So that's that is fine. Council Labarge. Yes, and Cordley, you're absolutely correct. The longer you talk with somebody, whatever you feel is so valuable and eye-catching of a candidate like you did, okay? It's extremely important. Like some of the stuff that David said to me, knowing so many people in Northampton, his father was a city councilor. And I, I said, oh my goodness. I said, that was your dad? I never even knew his father. <laughs> so you find out things about individuals and so forth. To me, if you're going to talk with somebody for an hour and a half or two hours or whatever, <laughs> that's your choice. Okay, well, I feel it went well, and I appreciate all the work that everybody put into this. And I'll, I'll just reiterate that I, I believe that, uh, I mean, these are people who are stepping forward to volunteer, but they are being well vetted. And uh, uh, the applications uh, sometimes are kept you know, on file in the mayor's office for up to a couple of years. And um, a, 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 a vacancy may not occur uh, right away when someone applies, but the, there is a, a backlog of applications that are reviewed regularly. The mayor does interview candidates as well. And uh, she is consulting with uh, the staff for the particular border commission. And then uh, uh, Laura is making sure that, uh, and working with the mayor's office to make sure that the uh, chairs and vice chairs also have a chance to weigh in uh, on candidates as was recommended by the uh, select committee on on, uh, on on barriers. So all of that is happening. And uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to work through that as, again, as effect, efficiently as we can, but also making sure that everybody has a chance to be heard. So that all is good. And I did uh, talk with the mayor about a more sort of thorough uh, look at the uh, the barriers report. And I think we're going to do that at our April meeting. That would be about a year after the report was issued. So we can look at what which of those recommendations have been implemented, which have been which are being uh, worked on and and have a more thorough review of that report. So that's something to look forward to. Any uh, any new business today? No. I will, uh, Councilor Rothenberg. I will follow up with uh, Council President Jarrett on your earlier um, suggestion and uh, and uh, see uh, what he feels uh, in terms of what he would like to do in terms of a meeting with the mayor to discuss that. Okay. Thank you. All right, if there's no further business for us today, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second that. Okay. Laura, roll call, please. With the motion, I made the motion. Uh, well, I think Councillor Dubbs assumed that I oh. was making the motion. Oh, so oh I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. I messed that up. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second it. Okay. Okay. Um, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. 
and Councillor Moulton. Yes. All right. Thanks all. Appreciate it.